join us. Y'all bring your, bring your toys. I'm serious. I know it makes you a little nervous being in church and all. But we're going we're gonna to say a prayer together in just a second. And then we're going to read a story. And it's a story about Jesus and some people who really wanted to meet him. And you guys are going to help me tell this story so everybody can see it. And we'll try to hold up the pictures for them, okay? So first, let's all bow our heads and we're going to say a prayer. Will you say this prayer with me? Dear God, Dear God open, our hearts open our hearts and our minds, and our minds to, hear your word. to hear your word. Amen. Amen. All right, so this scripture that we are going to read today, that is the traditional scripture read after Jesus' birth, is a scripture from the Gospel of Matthew. You can come sit up here. And this is the scripture, so let's listen for this word. Matthew 2, 1 to 2. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So traditionally on this Sunday, for the last couple of years, something that uh, one of the previous pastors did was he wrote a story, a children's story, and it was called The Star. And then I wrote a couple of stories, but this year I found that sometimes other people write even better stories and they illustrate them. And I found this fantastic book called Home by Another Way by Barbara Brown Taylor. So we're gonna read this together and you all can play with the toys and certainly help me tell this story. This is the story of the Magi who come to see Jesus. Once upon a time, there were three very wise men who were all sitting in their own countries, minding their own business, when a bright star lodged in the right eye of each one of them. The star was so bright that none of them could tell whether it was burning in the sky or if it was their own imagination. But they were wise enough to know it didn't matter all that much. The point was, something beyond them was calling them, and it was a tug that they had been waiting for all their lives. Do you see the star right there, kind of burning in their eye? Each was in his own country and had tried books, magic, and astrology. One lived on nothing but dried herbs and boiled in water. Could you imagine only eating boiled water with dried herbs? Yeah, that's what I would say. Another had spent his entire fortune learning how to read and write in an ancient language. The third one learned to walk on hot coals, though it did nothing for him behind the, beyond the great sense of relief he felt at the end. Could you imagine walking across hot coals? No. Despite their best efforts, all three of them still felt that something was missing. They were all glad for the reason to get out of town, which were clearly where the star was calling them, out, away from everything they knew, how to manage and how to survive, out from under the reputations they had built for themselves, the high expectations, the disappointing routines. And so they set out one by one, each believing that he was the only one with a star in his eye until they all ran into each other on the road to Jerusalem. Do you think they all said, did you see that star? Did you see that star? From a distance, each thought the other to be a mirage at first, a twinkling reflection made of vapor and heat. But as they drew near to one another, they saw that the star had them in common, like a tattoo or a secret handshake, something that made them brothers before they even spoke. They all believed that the star was leading them to Jerusalem, this made perfect sense because they had every reason to believe they were on their way to meet a king. The king would be in Jerusalem, right? In the old days. Sorry, I'm not including you all. They had no trouble gaining entrance to the palace. They looked rich and that was enough to get them a royal audience. But the king they met was something of a disappointment. He was lumpy and rumpled and he had a terrible breath. Ooh. His skin looked a funny orange color, and he was sickly, as if the bile had gotten the best of him. The guards on either side of him shook in fear, can you shake in fear, of their king, so much so that the spears rattled against their shields. 
without even comparing notes, the wise men knew this is not the person they were looking for. So they asked, do you know of any other kings in the general area? Can you see the king? He doesn't look like a great guy, does he? The king had been picking at his fingernails, looking at how bored he was, but the question got his attention. He looked right at them for the first time. That was when he saw the star in each of their eyes. His eyes grew perfectly round like the eyes of a snake. The king asked the wise men if if they would please excuse him for a moment. Then he stepped into his private chapel to confer with his clergy. They whipped out their old reference books, which smelled of mold because they hadn't been used so long, and told the king what he wanted to know. Yes, they said, there was something in this book of Micah about the new ruler for Israel. Nothing to get excited about, though. It was short. It had been there for a long time. It was unlikely that the men from the other room were fulfilling that prophecy. But sure, why not? Send the wise men to Bethlehem to check it out. Save the king a little money instead of doing his own research. So that was what the king did. He gargled, combed his hair, and went back to tell the wise men that they should go to Bethlehem at once with his blessing on one condition that they come back and tell him who his successor was so that he could um, send flowers to this new king. His breath smelled like pine sol. Do you know what pine sol is? It's that cleaning stuff. Mm. When he said this, which made the wise men feel quite Queasy. They knew something was not right, but once they were back out in the night air, they could see the star in the sky again, and they set their minds at rest, knowing they were going to this star. They followed that star right to the doorway of a one-room house in Bethlehem. It was a perfectly nice place, modest, well-built, though not the kind of place where they had expected to find a king. There was a dog sniffing the woodpile under the eaves in hope of finding a mouse. Someone was practicing the lute next door, going over and over the same notes again and again. The smell of dinner was still in the air, wheat cakes cooked on griddles, greased with sheep's fat, lentils with lots of garlic, and rice. Mmm. No? That doesn't sound good to you all? (laughs) The place looked so simple, they might not have ever chosen it themselves, but... Since the star had chosen it for them, they knocked. Can you knock? When the door opened, the couple standing behind it almost died of fright. (gasps) Can you do that? (gasps) There you go. Not that the wise men noticed. With their arms full of gifts, they crowded into the small space, bumping their turbans on the rafters and snagging their robes on the rough furniture. They all could see, all they could see was the baby who was not afraid and whose right eye shone with that same star they had seen before they ever left home. Who are they seeing? Jesus. Jesus. You guys are good. It was him. Then whoever he was, they didn't have a clue, but they knew what to do. They got on their knees, and they bowed their heads. At Jesus' baby. Then they gave him the things they had brought for him. Do you remember what the wise men brought? Gold, myrrh, and frankincense. Very good. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh. All the wrong things. They could see now. Things that he had no use for. They should have brought him goat's milk, a warm blanket, something shiny to hang above his crib. But how could they have guessed they were going to see a baby? The child's parents were so gracious. They thanked the strangers for their expensive gifts, and they held him up for the baby to see. Then, to the wise men's complete surprise, the child's mother picked him up and handed him around so that each of them could held held that damp, soft, living weight in his arms. When they were finished admiring him, she took the baby back, nursed him, and put him back to bed. Then, before the light coming through the window of the house had entirely gone out, the three wise men fell asleep right where they sat. They got to hold the baby, isn't that cool? You don't want to hold the baby? 
Okay. You don't have to hold the baby. In the morning they, when they woke, the wise men could not find their star anywhere. They searched each other's eyes, but the stars were all gone. Frantically, they looked in the corners and under the chairs. The baby's mother even shook out the blankets. They couldn't find those stars that brought them to Bethlehem. Now they're getting a little scared. Can you imagine? They came there to follow a star and those stars are gone. Soon the wise men calmed down and said, never mind, we don't need them anymore. They had found what they were looking for, something they could not lose. As much as they hated to add, they added, they had better be on their way. They would not be going back through Jerusalem, they said. All three of them had woken from the same identical dream, warning them to steer clear of the city. If anyone in Jerusalem knew anything at all, they would be here instead of there. Besides, none of the wise men's old maps worked anymore. They would have to find a new way home. Remember the king wanted them to come back and tell them where this baby was? And they didn't want to anymore. They didn't need to. So the wise men picked up their packs, which were lighter than before, and then they lined up in front of the baby to thank him for the gifts that he had given them. What in the world are you talking about? Mary, the baby's mother, said, laughing. Why are you thanking this baby? For the scent and the weight and the skin of a baby, said the first wise man, who had no interest in uh, living on herbs anymore. For this home and the love here, said the second wise man, who could not remember how to say that in his ancient language he had learned. For a really great story, said the third wise man, who thought that telling it might do a lot more for him than walking on hot coals. (laughs) Then the wise men walked outside, stretched, kissed that baby goodbye, and went home by another way. The end. Good story, isn't it? Now we're going to sing, and we're going to tell the story through song. If y'all would stand, we're going to sing and start with Angels We Have Heard on High, and then we'll just go through all of this medley of wonderful songs. You all can keep playing.
And all of God's